Pastor's ready for taking notes, man. He's got six pens. <laughs> just, just in case one dries up. That's fine. Have you checked them to see if they're... They she gives, maybe she only gives back the one dried up. Well, good morning. What? Okay, well, good morning. Uh, it's our, uh, I already noticed I had a mistake. July, it's August. <laughs> I have to redo the whole thing. Anyway, we're, we're going to continue our uh, discussion of the uh, divided kingdom. We'll get through a few kings today. I kind of prepared to do like five, but... We're going to try and keep it a little shorter because we got some other things happening here today. So we're going to keep it, uh, I'll try to keep it brief. Anyway, I'm very tired because I have not, I did not sleep. Oh. Yeah, so it's, I'm, I'm tired. It's my anniversary today. So it's kind of depressing, but uh, count my blessings. 58 years today. So, um, all right. So we're going to talk about the divided kingdom. Now, we'll, we'll, we'll go over what we did last week briefly. Um, hello. Are you going to change for me here? Wait a minute. We have technology issues here. We are frozen up. Anybody have any questions about last week? <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, when in doubt. Cross section of plant cell, maybe? I don't know. That's what I thought. I have no idea. Though. What's that? The screensaver to me looked like the cross section magnified of a plant cell. But I don't know if that's what it was. It looked like a pound with a fish. No, I, oh, that's, that's just, uh, that's my, that's a stupid Microsoft. I know the bubble on a level. Yeah. That's what it looks like when you shake it. Could be. No signal. Is it on? It's telling you what to do. Yeah. Let's, let's hope. Now, if I go... I knew I should have. It looked like it was all ready to go, too. Yes, it did. It, it frees up sometimes. It's not supposed to. It's it's not supposed to do that. Oh. All right. We have lift off. Okay. So we're going to go over uh, this week. We're going to. Whoa. We're going to. Uh, Start, we're going to dive a little more into the Kings before we get going. We'll start a little review of last week. But today, I'm going to try and do Jeroboam, uh, Nadab, and uh, maybe we'll get through Asa. Um, a lot of, a lot, there's a lot of good stuff in here, but uh, it'll, it'll take too long for today. All right, so infamous, infamous timeline. We're in the United Kingdom. You know, we're talking about the north and south. And last week we talked about Rehoboam and uh, Ab 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 Abijah. Abijah. There's two people we'll talk about today. There's two people with that name that happened at right at the same point in time in history, which gets kind of confusing. But this particular king is also known as Abijam, uh, depending on whether you're reading chronicles or kings um, okay so we talked about the downfall what had happened why the kingdom actually split remember God and David had given uh, Solomon instructions on how he should live and how he should be obedient to God and because he didn't uh, God is going to take care of things so uh, he, he was disobedient and in the end, before he dies, uh, there are a lot, we talked about this, there were a lot of things going on, adversaries, 
the, the nation appeared to be nice and healthy, but there had been a lot of things going on under the surface for some time. And near the end, uh, one of his uh, servants, one of the people who worked for him, uh, uh, Jeroboam, who we will talk about today, was worked his way up and had become one of his main guys as far as uh, big construction projects and and in tax collecting. And because of that, he was really involved and got really involved with the people, got around and heard a lot of their grumbling. Uh, he started thinking things. Solomon gets word of this and basically comes after him. He flees, goes to Egypt, uh, uh, hangs out with Shishak, uh, the, first, uh, the first pharaoh of this new dynasty. He was a, a, a Libyan, actually. And he had, been the, he had been the general, we talked about this some time ago, he had been the general of the army of Egypt before that. Um, but near that time, before, before Jer Jeroboam flees, Ahijah, a prophet, had come to him, to Jeroboam, the new robe tore it into 12 pieces and said, God is going to bless you. And you are going to become the leader of the 10 tribes. And just a remnant is going to stay with, uh, with the lineage of David. And... Uh, he did that, but he, he did as they, these prophets always do, that basically say, if you're obedient, good things will come to you. It will be good. If you're disobedient, bad things will happen. I don't know why. We never seem to learn that lesson. Okay. So when he dies, Rehoboam became um, the king of Israel. His, uh, Solomon's son, Rehoboam, became the king of, uh, of Israel, all of Israel, for a very short period of time. Went to Shechem for his coronation, if you will. And at that point, a uh, delegation from uh, the, the ten tr northern tribes approached him, uh, and Jeroboam was involved with that, and basically said, We'll, we'll be more than willing to follow you if you will lighten the load. We talked about this a lot. Heavy taxes, a lot of indentured or a lot of forced labor that Solomon had put on the people. And they wanted, they wanted remedy from that. Uh, basically, uh, Rehoboam thought about it, got some advice from some young guys, and basically said, sorry, I'm going to turn the screws up a little bit on you, make it worse. So the, the northern tribe, northern ten tribes rebel, okay? They rebel, and uh, this is very interesting. Yes, it is. This is working, this is not. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, well, let's make sure I'm not getting out of sequence here. Okay, so this is this is basically a picture of the, of the two of the two kingdoms. They're not quite equal. This is actually this is a, a larger, richer area, more people than uh, than Judah. Judah was comprised of uh, the, the new na kingdom of Judah is Judah and Benjamin, which was up here in that area. So the other twelve tribes were up there. We still have the Philistines down here and the Phoenicians up there, which we've talked about many times. I wonder why. Okay, so we. This is just a picture of the northern and southern kingdoms and other things that were going on in the world. So we're. Let me interrupt you real quick. Janet's ride is here because she has to leave. Who's that? Janet's ride is here for Janet. Oh, okay. All right, Miss yeah. Janet. We'll see you later. All right, so this we, we, we sh we've looked at this before. This shows some of the other things that were going on in the, in the world as well as in the Middle East at that time. Okay, so uh, we focused on first on Rehoboam, and he kind of fits in here. He, he, my little arrow shows him over here because there was one year where he was the king of all of Israel, but until... 
uh, 931 is when he became the king of only Judah. So about a year he was uh, the king. How old, how old was he when he became king? Forty-one. Uh, so, oh, right there. Yeah, so I got a slide here. We don't go into all this, but you know all the data about him. You know, he was he reigned for seventeen years, and uh, he was forty-one years old. There's a scripture. Uh, it was morality-wise, he was an evil king. Uh, he died about fifty. He was fifty-eight years old. Uh, like a lot of them, had a lot of wives and children and concubines, and so. So then we talked, we talked a little bit about Abijah, and he was the king. He was the son of Rehoboam, and he only served for a very short period of time, and uh, less than three years probably. Um, but he was the son of Rehoboam, and we talked a little bit about his lineage, his mother and stuff when we, we talked about this before. But basically, he was an evil evil king. There was a lot, a lot that went on when he was king. But he was, they were, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom were constantly fighting each other. It was civil war continuously. Um, so he had been, he was uh, uh, actually attacking um, some of the nation and uh, he will get, uh, he will die. And I, I was trying to think, here's, oh, I said a show here somewhere that it, there's, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, here. So it, depending on whether you're reading Kings or Chronicles, you'll sometimes see his name as Ab Abiyajam rather than Abiyajah. And as we'll talk about, uh, Jeroboam in a little bit. Jeroboam has a son named Abijah. Also, we'll talk about that. But that's so when you're reading it, you kind of have to look at the context of who's being being talked about. Okay, so we th this is stuff we covered last week, and this is just I kind of try to highlight chronologically things that happened. So we talked about Rehoboam succeeded from Solomon. King, he, he followed Solomon as king. Uh, uh, the northern tribes rebelled. The, the kingdom was split. Jeroboam becomes the king of, the, of, of Israel. Uh, the two nations continue to fight. Kind of border, border wars go on throughout the, the whole time of the divided kingdom. Um, uh, Rehoboam, while he was there, he did fortify some of the cities to kind of buffer along the border. So he did quite a bit of stuff. Um, he, did, he did some positive things, but he did fortify to try and protect against that. Uh, we talked about Shishak, the pharaoh. Um, he goes up and attacks, kind of at the request of Jeroboam for help, and he goes up and attacks and takes quite a few cities that are documented archaeologically in uh, Karnak inscriptions, which detail the 150 or so cities that Shishak took from the Palestine area. Um, I thought so, that Shishak guy was a rapper. What's that? <laughs> I thought he was a rapper. <laughs> no, that's Shishank. Uh, he's also called Shushank, but yeah, he is, could have been a rapper. Uh, but um, he, he did. He he ends up uh, attacking, and and he basically uh, Rehoboam pays him off. He takes all the gold and stuff out of the temple and the palace, and pays off uh, Shishak. Shishak leaves Jerusalem alone. But basically, they're now a vassal state of, of, of Egypt from that point on. Um, like I said, after, after Re uh, Rehoboam, then his son became king. Uh, he continued the border war. Asa became king of Judah after his another son. He becomes the next son. And 
I, I'm putting it here because we're going to get into it here in a minute, but Jeroboam died just about a year after Asa becomes king. So that's kind of where they tie together. Um, uh, Abijah had a, had a major victories against Rehoboam. God had supported him. They, they had, huh? Jeroboam? Jeroboam. Abijah had, had victories over Jeroboam. Did I say Rehoboam? Oh, Jeroboam. Uh, he had attacked a much larger force of Jeroboam, Jeroboam and actually tried to, to uh, ambush him. He split his forces, tried to come in behind him. Uh, God told him, Abijah, don't worry, I'm going to take care of things. Basically, God routes Jeroboam. Jeroboam loses quite a bit of his uh, military uh, prowess. Now, Asa, so who's the Asa's father? Abijab. Abijab or Abijam. He's, this, remember, the southern kingdom is the lineage of David. So they're all down the line. They're all going to be... Father, son, father, son, father, son. Except for uh, the queen, which we'll talk about. A couple of, whenever. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about Jeroboam. So Jeroboam is here in timeline, still in this. So he's kind of contemporary with Rehoboam. Um, actually um, lives a little bit longer than uh, Jeroboam, uh, Rehoboam, excuse me. And it overlaps here with Abijah, and overlaps a little bit with King Asa. Okay, and there were some prophets at work here that uh, hopefully we'll talk about too. So that the kind of the timeline. Just important to see we're ping ponging back and forth between north and south, and it's kind of hard to figure out how to how to how to talk about it. But you've got to look at the two the two. Um, Kingdoms, one to one to the other. Okay, so uh, Jeroboam, like I said, he was uh, Jeroboam. Of course, was not of a kingly lineage. He was he was one of uh, uh, Solomon's servants, if you will. Um, but he is he is known as the first king of the of the northern kingdom. Okay, he is going to be succeeded by his son. Very short lineage there, but um, he reigned for 17 years as king. Uh, some major events that happened. Um, so, when we think about Jeroboam, to me, to me, when I think about Jeroboam, I think about his, his the practices he did. Some will say he was uh, just trying to control the people. He was afraid he was going to lose the people, but uh, he, he was afraid that the people of Israel, because they, they had to celebrate, they celebrate all these feast days, and according to the law, they were to go to the temple to worship. So the three major, major hol holidays, if you will, uh, they were expected to go at least once uh, during that time. And so everybody in the whole nation. So Jeroboam was afraid these people are going to do that. They're going to go down there and they're going to stay. So that may have been one of his motivations. He certainly was an idolatrous person. So he, just, he comes up with a, a new scheme, maybe a new religion. You want to call it a new religion. I, I personally, when I read it, I think that, you know, that he was just trying to show people they could worship Yahweh without having to go to Jerusalem, it ends up being a lot more than that. So he creates two worship sites in Israel, Bethel, which is down very close to Jerusalem in the very southern end of, of Israel, and the city of Dan, it used to be Lachish, which is up at the northern end. He built altars, and he built 
golden calves, golden calves to worship. And he said, this is Yahweh. I mean, that, that basically. So he did that. He did a, a lot of other things that to, to kind of bolster that. He, um, he created his own priesthood, not following the Mosaic, the, the Torah, uh, which was the Le- should have been Levites. Anybody, you paid the price, you could become a priest. So you had priests that were now uh, worshiping and leading worship at these, at these sites. Um, there, there was a point in time early on here when, um, uh, where is it, man of God? Okay. There's a point in time when he is actually worshiping at, at, at Bethel and he is worshiping um, incense and whatever. And a, a prophet in the Bible just calls him a man of God, doesn't give a name to this particular prophet. But basically tells him, you know, this is bad, and he kind of destroys the the all, which he actually rebuilds. But but so he's being told all the time, this is you're you're doing wrong. Um, but but at that time he he uh, he built and he, he fortified the cities, uh, but. Like I said, there were still a lot of problems. When, when uh, Abiyajab, the son of uh, his son, Rehoboam's son, is sick. Now remember, uh, uh, Abijah, no, excuse me, Ahijah <laughs> was a prophet who had told Jeroboam that he was going to give split the nation, okay? So he's still in the scene, but he's an older ma- old man now. Well, Jeroboam has a son called Abijah, young man, uh, maybe an infant, I'm not sure, uh, who is very sick. He tells his wife to take the son and go see the prophet. He tells her to disguise herself, uh, take uh, loaves of bread and cakes and honey, and go and disguise and go see Ahijah, who was an old man and pretty blind at this time. Now, you can look at that and say, why did he do that? Why did he send, I mean, he was a worshiper of all this stuff. Now, why is he going to a follower of Yahweh? Uh, he obviously still had, had feelings that way. And there's a lot of discussion about, well, why did he have his wife disguise herself? Why didn't he do it? Well, I think he was afraid of the people. He didn't want to, I don't think he wanted to show the people that he was still a follower of the of of Yahweh. So, uh, it's also amazing to me how when people find themselves in a difficult situation, mm-hmm. they return to their roots. Mm-hmm. And so we know that the things that we trust in that are of God. Yeah. When you, when you really need something, and we see that even in our own current. So he, yeah, so the, the, his wife goes there and the prophet can't see, but he knows who it is. He knows who it is, he t- but he basically t- tells, tells her, he prophesies that your son is not going to live. In fact, he will not live to go cross your threshold. And that your whole, your whole lineage is going to be destroyed. So he prophesied this. She goes, she does go back home. The instant she walked into the house, the, the son dies. Okay. Okay, so Jeroboam did a lot of stuff. I mean, he he did a lot of things. He was he he was a a pretty active king. That, but they you gotta remember they're they're warring all the time, and there, there's basically battles going on. All it's a civil war, and there's 
and they're saying there are periods of peace, but after uh, early on in uh, Ace's uh, reign, for the first, he reigns, let me go on to the next slide so I can show you. So he's in here and he, he reigns for a pretty good period of time. He overlaps with, with Jeroboam, but he's really starting to overlap with the other, other people in the northern kingdom. But th th this is a period of time when um, uh, he is the third king. Um, his, his son is Je uh, Je uh, Josephat. We'll talk about it later. But, but um, it was, it, there was a period of, of somewhat of peace. It was a, a, a fairly peaceful period for the, maybe hmm, 20 years. Um, I don't, I don't know why there was peace, but there just there wasn't a lot of fighting going on, and so it was pretty pretty stable. But, but Asa for, is the first king of southern um, of the southern kingdom who is a believer in Yahweh. I mean, he is a faithful man. He does a lot of stuff. He gets rid of, of all of the idolatry that was going on, uh, the, the, the altars, the ashras. He, did, he got rid of all those things. He, he really just kind of cleaned up the kingdom. Uh, he, did, he, he did a lot of stuff, including um, uh, getting rid of his grandmother, uh, who was was uh, very much promoting some of this idolatry. So he did a lot of cleaning up, if you will. And, but he was having lots of battles at the same time, but not against, not against the, the Northern Kingdom, but people outside. So there was alliances going on. So uh, he was attacked by, uh, uh, we talk about the e Ethiopia, but I think it was a, um, it was, it was a, a unified army of Egyptian, Libyan, Ethiopian. It was a big, a big army. And uh, God is with, uh, uh, is with him, and he, he does major damage to um, the, that army. The Bible says that they killed, there were over a million of the of the opposing army was killed. Okay, so he, he continues building and fortifying cities, uh, but as he moves, as he moves towards clearing up all this idolatry, um, and in, in he has word that there's that there that he he needs that. Jeroboam, or not, excuse me, the northern kingdom is going to come down and, and attack him. He uh, does an alliance with uh, the Syrians to join his, so he bribes them, pay, mercenaries, and they take on and defeat, uh, pretty soundly defeat the northern kingdom. The problem here is that he is trusting on his own. He's not asking for God to help. So he's not counting on the Lord. He, he's going on his own. He, things start to go bad. He gets inflicted. He has a foot disease. Again, he doesn't go to the Lord for help. He goes to physicians. So in the last five years or so of his life, um, he is doing, God is not with him. The, the prophet tells him, this is not going to go good for you because of these things. You're not following God. He jails the prophet. Um, it just, you know, he ends up dying. And, uh, but again, even in the case of this was really a, a good godly man and did a lot of good things for the kingdom but he too started falling into idolatry well not so much idolatry not like the others but I mean 
not counting on God, counting on himself, and he's punished for it. Um, and that's going to kind of end his life. His, his life ends there, and his son is going to become the next. One thing about Asa, too, is the Bible says that he removed the Sodomites from the land. Oh, oh excuse me. Thank you very much. Yeah. When he got rid of idolatry, he'd get, I mean, there was a lot of temple prostitutions, homosexuality. He, he ridded, I mean, he cleaned house. He really did. Um, and he was doing really good. But I think in the end, he didn't count on God. He counted on himself. And he ends up um, dying from, from that. So, um, so King Basha becomes, uh, is the king of the northern tribe. And we'll talk about him next week. But he is, he is, is, is basically Asa's main nemesis at this time, and uh, so that's where he. T- I said he took he took the all the the riches from the temple and the palace to buy the mercenary army so that he could take on the northern tribe and and was able to defeat them. So before we, I, I kind of in here because so we got to end early. Are we about, about right? Where, where, where was right? Yeah, about 1040, 25. Oh, got a few more minutes. Okay. So um, the next king of, of Israel is Nadab. And he is, um, he lives a pretty short time. He's pretty, he reigns for a pretty short period of time. Uh, just a couple of years. Uh, fits in between uh Jeroboam and Basha, and is serving at the same time here that these things are going on. So he lived, he was there in Italy about two years. You know, he was, um, he was Jer- Jeroboam's son. They were Ephraimites, and um, he is the second king of the northern, of the northern um, kingdom. And Basha, who is one we'll talk about next week, was the uh, the next king, his son. Excuse me, not his son. The next king. Uh, the story here is that uh, Nadab, basically there's not a lot of stuff about him in the Bible. Um, he, he lives a very short, he reigns a very short period of time. Basically, he's warring with the north. But he's also, they're warring with other nations. They're nemesis, the Philistines. So there's a, he's in battle. Um, he is actually with the army. They're battling the Philistines. And this, one of the leaders of his army um, decides uh, it's a good opportunity. And he actually kills, murders. Nadab, that's Basha, he will become the next king. Uh, interesting thing here is there, there's prophecy, when the, the prophecy we were talking about was that said that the, the, the whole descendants, not just his son was going to die, but his whole family, the whole lineage is going to be done away with. He, is, he actually is killed in the field. Uh, he's eaten by the birds. Basha ends up going and wiping out all of Jeroboam's uh, family. So totally annihilated them. And he then becomes the, the next king. So any questions? Because I'm not going to get into it. So the Levites, when they put the two calf, the golden calves, Started going down to the southern kingdom, right? The, the, oh, so during during this whole time, a lot of the people in the north are moving down to the south. A lot of the Levites, because they were more godly, especially when Asa was uh, was king, that 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 drew a lot of people in who wanted to, 
uh, worship Yahweh. So they, they were they were moving down. A lot of the people and a lot of the priests actually moved down into uh, in that period. So he, the southern kingdom grows. Um, they were still growing in wealth. Um, probably the north was richer in resources and people, but God still. Uh, provided for the, the kingdom in the south and they continued I mean even though he gave away all his gold and silver um, to buy to buy the army the mercenaries they continue bringing in money and they uh, gradually replete so they're, they're, a lot of the the commerce and stuff that was going on um, in 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 Solomon's thing was still still going on in in uh, th this this period of time. In in fact, um, uh, Rema, which is a city, a town just north of Jerusalem, like about five miles, the north built and fortified that city. They fortified the city, basically to do an economic siege, if you will, on the south, cut off their major trade routes. That's when uh, they contracted with the Syrian army to attack uh, the north from the north, thus drawing the northern people that went at Ramah, which is down south, to draw the forces up to go fight them. That allowed uh, Asa to go in and take back Rema and you know, so just a lot of that stuff going on all the time. But um, any any questions? <laughs> okay, let's say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for the chance to um, dig into what is can be a little complicated. But uh, I ask that you um, help us to open up our minds and try to understand the time. There's so much so much history and so many stories that uh, really can make it very interesting. I just ask that we bless the service and just ask us all in Jesus' name. Amen.